Simply call the bank and say, hey, can I go ahead and get a credit limit increase? You don't even have to call them. You can go online if you want to. If you're approved, assuming you have balances as well, whether you have balances or not, but you're really going to see the impact if you already have balances, okay? Just because you have a balance on your credit card, that does not mean that you cannot ask for a credit limit increase. Once you do that... If you need a hundred points added to your credit score, then you're gonna to wanna to stick around until the end of this video. If you need a hundred points added to your credit score fast, then you wanna stick around until the end of this video as we're gonna break down six ways that you can improve your credit score a hundred points or more within seven to 14 days or less. Let's get right into it. Number one is gonna be paying off your credit cards or paying down your credit cards. Number one, the first thing you have to understand is that if you're looking to get 100 points really fast, that means your score is more than likely under 700. Now, this will not work if you are looking to do this if your credit score is already over 700. This will only work if your credit score is more than likely under 700, under 650, under 600. The lower your credit score is, the more points you're going to see from this list, okay? So that's the first thing that you have to understand. But the first step that you want to take is actually paying down your credit cards, all right? So if you're looking to get 100 points, that means you obviously need 100 points, which means you're probably in the threes, fours, or fives, or low sixes trying to get to the sevens and of so forth, okay? Or trying to get into the sixes as well, too, as that's where you can get home ownership. But number one is essentially going to be paying down your credit cards before the statement date. Let's say, for example, your credit card statement date is on the 15th, okay? And then you have the statement date, and then you also have when they actually report to the actual credit bureaus. That's more important. To find that out, when they actually update this, you can look at your credit report. Credit Karma is a great way to do this because Credit Karma updates every time that you actually go to the website and refresh it. Now, in some situations, it may be you may have to wait about a week to refresh it, but you also can call your credit card provider and say, hey, when do you report this to the credit bureau? Then once they give you that time and date, then once they give you that date on when they report to the credit bureaus, now you know when you need to have that credit card paid down. So for example, if you have a credit card that has a thousand dollar limit and more than likely that balance is going to be close to a thousand dollars as well or somewhere in that range, you want to pay that credit card down, preferably get it around about 30 percent, 10 percent, somewhere at ideally about 7 percent if you can. The reason why I say 30 is because 30% is better than 90%, right? 30% is better than 60% or 50%. But if you can do it, bring it down to 7 to 10% utilization, and you want to go ahead and get that done before the statement date. Number two, adding previous rental history to your credit report. There's a lot of different you know, ways that you could do this, but one of the best ways to do this is actually going to be with this particular company. What this company does is they allow you to, well, not you, but they essentially allow your previous rental history to be added to your credit report, okay? And FICO has approved that this will be included in the algorithm for your score. Now, the reason why rental reporting is on the rise is because it only takes about 14 days to show up on your credit report. Now, this is assuming you sign up on Monday, you get your, you get all the documentation that's in there and things of that sort by Tuesday, Wednesday, you know, make sure they have everything that they need. They verify it. They can get that added to your credit report as soon as 14 to 21 days added to your credit report. OK, and the company that we recommend for this is actually in the link down in the description below. So you can see if this is a good fit for you to add previous rental history. So once that 24 months of on time payment credit history hits your credit report, you're most definitely going to see some points added to your credit score as well. Number three, this is where you want to look for any charged off credit cards with balances. OK, typically, again, when people are looking to get 100 points added to their credit scores, they're essentially in the lower score ranges. They're already under 700. They're already under 600. OK, and so you have to look at how you got there. Right. So we can't go back in the past and fix everything. But you can't forget one of the biggest fastest, one of the biggest issues that keeps scores down is going to be obviously negative things that happen, right? Late payments, uh, charged off accounts, things of that sort. But charged off, charged off accounts, specifically charged off credit cards, they have utilization. That utilization is still affecting you. A lot of people don't think about it like that. Let's say you have a charged off credit card and you had a $2,000 balance. You said, I'm not paying that, right? Every single month that that's on your credit report, 
that utilization is playing a role in the algorithm and is hurting your score. If you can make a payment arrangement by either settling that account or paying it in full, or just bringing it down and treating it like a regular credit card, bringing it down to 10%, 7%, 30% utilization, that will affect your credit score because again, the algorithm doesn't care that it's a charged off account. The algorithm doesn't care how old it is as far as it pertains to utilization. It is still hurting your, uh, it's still hurting your credit score just as if that credit card was still open. Number four is asking for a credit limit increase, okay? Now you obviously, in order for you to do this, you need to be in a, in a, in a small window like anywhere between about 600 to 650, you still can maximize of the points, you know, by simply asking them for a credit limit increase. So for example, let's say for example, you already have your credit cards and then you, know, you want to go ahead and get close to 100 points by doing all the rest of these things, then this is something that you wanna to add to that arsenal as well. You simply call the bank and say, hey, can I go ahead and get a credit limit increase? You don't even have to call them. You can go online if you want to. If you're approved, assuming you have balances as well, whether you have balances or not, but you're really going to see the impact if you already have balances, okay? Just because you have a balance on your credit card, that does not mean that you cannot ask for a credit limit increase. Once you do that, let's say, for example, your balance on a credit card is $300. Let's say the limit is $500. So balance is $300 limit is 500 that's already over 50 percent utilization okay so now that you're already over 50 percent utilization let's say you call the bank and say hey can i get a credit limit increase or go online however you want to do it and they give you a credit limit increase of a thousand to fifteen hundred okay now instead of the utilization being i'm sorry instead of the limit being 500 now that let's say for example that limit was a thousand not fifteen hundred because a thousand that's i think that's more easier for people to accomplish right off the back okay going from 500 to a thousand now it's going to be 300 divided by 1,000 versus 300 divided by 500. Now you're going to be able to, now you're going to be at 30% utilization, right? Instead of being at 60% utilization, okay? And again, that's the thing. You want to make sure that you are in position to do that, okay? The score has to be there. Number five is using a personal loan to pay off your credit cards. Now, in order to do this, you got to have a score between 600 to 650 in order for this to work, okay? That's number one. Number two, you need to get the credit card, uh, not just the statement dates, but you need the credit card dates that they're going to be reporting to the credit bureaus. OK, and what you'll do with how you'll be able to do it is you'll be able to take your personal loan, pay off the credit cards. Now, when the credit cards report to the credit bureaus, they're now going to show as paid off. But guess what's not showing on your credit report? Exactly. The personal loan is not showing on there yet because that's going to take a while to show up. OK. Now you have that window of time that you look good on the credit report, but obviously it's just a matter of time before that new debt drops on your credit report. But that's not going to drop your credit score substantially because it's not looking at the debt itself. A personal loan is just a set debt amount. Now, what will reset your, well, not reset the score, but what will reset the algorithm a little bit is going to be the fact that you have a brand new account now on your credit report, which is going to affect your average age of accounts, which affects the algorithm overall. But that's only going to help drop you maybe a couple of points at the most, okay? Because again, it's not a utilization account. It's not like getting a brand new furniture credit card and then maxing it out. And then a maxed out credit card shows up on your credit report. This is a personal loan. So it has no idea what that amount of money was used for or whatever. But now it's showing that you have those credit cards paid off completely. OK. And again, that's if you need a quick way to see these points for a short period of time. And of course, the most famous is becoming an authorized user. Now, becoming an authorized user, this is something that's been out for years, piggybacking, trade lines. But here's the thing, OK, you got to be careful because a lot of people forget the top things that you should be focused on when you are actually getting uh, when you're becoming an authorized user on someone's credit report. OK, when you're becoming an authorized user on someone's credit card. OK, and that's number one is payment history. I know people say, hey, have you been on time? But on time means a lot of different things for people. On time means this month. On time means this year. On time means on this credit card. You, you'd be surprised what people think you know, on time is, but they forgot about that one time or those two times that they had those late payments. So put eyes on that unless it's someone that you can actually trust, okay? That the payment history, it needs to be flawless. Number two is how old the account is. Sometimes you're being added onto a credit card, but then they just opened that credit card three months ago. That's not going to do anything to your credit score, okay? You need something with some meat on the bone. You need something that's been open for a minute, at least, at least about six months to see just a little bit of progression. The older the card, the longer it's been open, the better. So five years, 10 years, 15 years, 
so on and so forth that's gonna most definitely make that card a strong card to be added to number three is the balance making sure that the balances are low on this card okay it doesn't make sense to be on a authorized user credit card if the balance is if the balance is still too close to the limit okay um just because someone has made the payments on time it's not gonna mean anything if the limit is ten thousand twenty thousand if the utilization is eighty percent ninety percent okay you need something that's again that's around seven percent ten percent utilization to truly maximize that credit card and the fourth thing that people don't think about is is it going to show up on all three bureaus okay because that's one of the points of actually doing it sometimes when you're being added to a um an as an authorized user some banks do not report the authorized user uh history to all three credit bureaus they'll at least report it to one so guaranteed it will be on one which one is going to be a little bit different for each credit card company some credit card companies do all three some do two and some do one you'll find out once you're added to uh those particular credit cards all right and of course if you like this video you're most definitely going to love the next one and i'll see you there